Hello everybody, Father Hamilton here with a video message to go along with the letter that I'm communicating to the parish today about the schedule for this week and for the upcoming weekend, this first week of resumed public masses. This is a great joy for us and something we're very excited about. After nine weekends to finally be able to be back inside for mass and open for uh, public masses. However, at the same time, I need to get a clear message out there and to remind all of us that we are reopen we are not back to normal. And there's gonna be a great temptation in our desire to kind of get back into normalcy and routine to expect normalcy. And folks, I just have to say that we are not back to normal. We're almost not back to normal in any way whatsoever. We won't have the normal number of masses. We won't have the normal mass times. We won't even have the normalcy of the number of people who are able to gather inside. So we really need to check those expectations. Be joyful that we're back inside, yes, but reopen does not mean back to normal. And I say that because there might be a tendency to kind of get frustrated, to want to complain uh, when things are requiring change of each of us, and maybe even to not want to cooperate with the procedures that are in place. When we hopefully can be aware enough to catch ourselves, maybe operating out of an expectation that isn't reality, I, I would ask you just to really check that, that expectation, to check kind of yourself when you're reacting out of, of something that isn't real or true. We're reopened. We are not back to normal. We're gonna need everyone's charity, patience, and cooperation as we uh, joyfully resume public masses back inside. A lot of things to get through. I'm gonna to try to get through this as quickly as possible. Watch the video uh, and please read carefully the letter. There's a lot of information you need to know. The first is a reminder that Archbishop Coakley, because of the difficulties of this time frame and the concern, has generously granted and continues to grant a general dispensation from the obligation to attend Sunday Mass and Holy Day Mass. Uh, that means if you are just concerned about being outside for your own well-being, if you're concerned about gathering in groups, it means if you just think it's best you not come right now because you're caring for someone who you're concerned about, if it means you don't actually make it inside church because of the limitations that are upon us, folks, you have been dispensed from the obligation. Hear that, receive that as a gift from your archbishop. Because of the difficult times that we're in, he has continued to grant a general dispensation for all Catholics throughout the Archdiocese of Oklahoma City. Uh, we need to be aware of health risk categories. Those who are in the age risk category of 65 years or older, those with pre-existing health and immune complications, or if you live with and or care for someone in one of those categories, I'm asking you to voluntarily stay at home. I know that sounds odd, never thought I'd say that as a priest to any Catholic, but out of concern for you and for your own health and well-being, I'm asking you to stay at home and remember you are again already dispensed from the obligation to attend Mass. If you've been exposed to someone who has tested positive for COVID-19 or exposed to someone with untested flu-like symptoms and illness, or if you yourself are ill or have had flu-like symptoms at any time in the last 14 days, you must stay at home. Please do not come out and put everyone else at risk if that's been the case for you. You must stay at home under those conditions. Call your doctor, follow your doctor's instructions, and stay at home. Social distancing will still be in effect, and that remains in place, and you and your families must follow social distancing on church property, both indoors and outdoors at all times. This is for your safety, certainly, yes, but we also need to remember this is for the comfort of other people around us. There may be others who are kind of starting to come out again into public gatherings, gatherings, but they might be made to feel very uncomfortable if others around them are not cooperating with the procedures in place. So I do ask that you understand social distancing must be followed at all times for yourself and, and thoughtfulness for others. You're encouraged to wear face masks at church and you'll need to bring your own. You're encouraged to bring and to use your own hand sanitizer as well. Please also bring your own disinfectant wipes, non-bleach type only, so that when you arrive, if you make it inside the church, when you arrive at a pew, you can wipe it down upon arrival and also wipe it down again upon exiting. Uh, that non-bleach type should protect the wood of our pews. You're also asked to bring your own baggie, your own Ziploc bag, so that used disinfectant wipes, you can place those in the baggies for disposal. One thing I need to get a message out about very clearly is I have a desperate, urgent need for new ushers. Um, we have many procedures that we have to follow, and we're going to need a lot of ushers who volunteer to make that possible. 
I can't do it myself. And frankly, if I don't get enough ushers, then that will also limit how we're able to begin building our mass schedule and maybe even considering adding a mass back in if we need it. If I don't have enough people, I just can't have mass because I can't ask the same small group of people to stay here and work mass after mass after mass after mass giving up their entire week and it's just not fair or right. Right now I do not have anywhere near enough ushers. So please hear me if you're willing to volunteer. If you are at least 18 years of age or older, a man or a woman, if you are under 65 years of age, if you're willing to wear a face mask because the ushers will be required to wear face, face masks in their service to the parish, then please call the parish office to volunteer 359-2700. There will be a new usher training this week, this Wednesday, May 20th at 6 p.m. here in the main church. So if you meet those requirements, please hear me. We desperately need your help. Please volunteer and help us with this huge undertaking of uh, being reopened for masses, but reopened under very strict limitations. Uh, ushers will be managing your movement, your entry into the church. Uh, your seating of all persons will be managed by ushers. They will be uh, directing the movement within mass and directing exiting. You must follow usher instructions. There will be no open seating or choice of pew. Please be patient and cooperative with ushers in these procedures. With regard to restrooms, you're asked to plan ahead and to use the restroom at home before you arrive at church. Uh, that's because you will not be free to leave your pew and move about the church. So please plan ahead. If absolutely necessary, restrooms may be used for serious need. Uh, but as a reminder, in this time frame, and of course in every time frame, the restrooms should never be used during the consecration and Holy Communion to avoid distraction during this most solemn part of the Mass. Please be aware of that for yourself. Instruct your children uh, in the same etiquette. So many of you are aware of and continue to be generous with the financial needs of our parish, and I'm most grateful. If you continue to use contribution envelopes, you can mail those into the parish office. If when you arrive for Mass and you make it inside the church, there will be collection baskets in the back of church so that you can drop your envelope off as you arrive or even as you leave. Um, and we will not be passing the collection basket around for obvious reasons. Uh, but our electronic giving program, Faith Direct, continues to be a very easy, safe, and manageable way for your gift giving to the parish. And so I would encourage you to become aware of that. Go to our parish website, click the tab for giving, and you'll see information about Faith Direct. Uh, you can also go directly to https colon forward slash forward slash membership dot faith direct dot net forward slash capital O capital K eight one five. That will take you directly to the St. Monica Faith Direct page. There's also a text to give option. You can text the dollar amount of your gift to the number four zero five three five eight two one two zero. Thank you so much for your ongoing generosity to our parish. Our confession schedule remains unchanged. I mean, we are still hearing confessions here in the main church to allow for greater spacing between people. Uh, confessions are on Tuesday at 4.15 p.m., and then again 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday is a Spanish language confession opportunity. Confessions are again Wednesday and Thursday at 4.15 and Saturday at 3 p.m. Uh, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament is such a blessing to our parish, and I really want to thank our committed adorers who, because of their generosity and their commitment, have managed to keep our adoration program going throughout this entire time, and that's such a blessing. It's like a, a spiritual generator of power for the life of our parish. Um, we've learned a lot of lessons over these this time frame together, and perhaps things we never thought of before. It's a natural assumption, maybe, Maybe that I would think I come to Holy Mass and I receive Holy Communion, but in fact those are two separate realities that are distinct, and so maybe over this time frame we've learned the value of the Mass itself as the sacrifice of Christ in my participation, participation in it just by being present or attending or praying versus a separate act of the fruit of the Mass being the reception of Holy Communion. We perhaps learned about the value of a spiritual communion. And so my suggestion to us is that in this difficult time frame, while God has still been giving us rich graces, maybe we've learned things in ways we didn't think of before, Hopefully, one of the things we learned is at the very heart of adoration, that in adoration, I'm not receiving Holy Communion, but I am worshiping and extending the value of the Mass 
by my prayer and worship of the Lord's real presence, body, blood, soul, and divinity. And perhaps those kind of lessons and graces, albeit in difficult times, might be an opportunity for us, having learned these things, to, to think of making a return to the Lord. And so if you're not already committed to our adoration program, I invite you to make a commitment to prayer during the week, or perhaps find a family member or a friend to share an adoration hour with. Call the office to get more information about our adoration program. Thanks to all of our generous adorers. Uh, the Mass schedule and Holy Communion. Uh, so the weekend schedule has to account for many factors with time-consuming procedures that require many staff and many volunteer ushers. The weekend schedule uh, will be evaluated and adjusted based on actual attendance. The schedule, remember, is temporary, provisional, and subject to change. And that schedule will be communicated week to week. In other words, what the schedule is the first weekend doesn't mean that's what it will be the second weekend or the next weekend. We'll We'll communicate that week to week so that you're aware. Uh, the first weekend, Sunday, May 24th, we will have two bilingual masses to accommodate the demographics of our entire community. Both of those masses will be on May 24th, Sunday itself. The first mass at 7.30 a.m. with FM radio transmission out to the parking lot. So we'll have church attendance and entrance. We'll have overflow in the parish hall and the radio transmission to the parking lot. The second mass on Sunday, May 24th will be at 10 a.m. That also will have seating inside the church, overflow in the hall, FM radio transmission out to the parking lot as a secondary overflow area, and that mass, the 10 a.m. mass, will also be live streamed. We'll only live stream one weekend mass from now on. That's my plan, at least right now, going forward for those of you who remain at home or watch from other locations. Be aware that you can uh, arrive at the church, but the doors will be locked and doors will open only 30 minutes before each Mass. Uh, you uh, may line up outside church, observing social distancing, of course, and entry to the church will be on a first-come, first-served basis. Once capacity in the church has been reached, there will be overflow seating in the parish hall, where we intend to have a broadcast of the Mass made available. Uh, and then if the hall also reaches capacity, there is the opportunity of being out in the parking lot with the FM radio transmission for still another overflow option. Uh, for all eligible Catholics attending Mass on the campus in whatever capacity, either the main church, the parish hall, or the parking lot, it is the plan to have the possibility of receiving Holy Communion available to you if you've attended Mass on the campus in some fashion. Daily Masses will follow a special schedule this week that should allow our staff and our ushers to practice all the new procedures associated with COVID COVID-19 protocols before the first weekend Masses. We definitely want to practice before we open doors on that first Sunday, May 24th. Um, all of the procedures and expectations that I've mentioned and that are in my letter apply to daily Mass as well. Daily Masses are typically smaller events, and so it should be easier to gain access inside the main church should you desire to attend daily mass. Daily masses will be held inside the main church to allow for greater social distancing, and all the daily masses this week will be in English. Doors open 30 minutes before each daily mass, and the temporary and provisional daily mass schedule for this week is as follows. May 19th, 21st and 22nd, Mass begins at 6 p.m. May 20th, Mass begins at 12 noon. And as I mentioned in my homily this past Sunday, as if uh, we didn't have enough to wrestle with here, our parish has yet still another item to wrestle with that's unique to us alone. It has nothing to do with COVID-19, but has everything to do with the city of Oklahoma City finally deciding to begin its anticipated construction project on Western Avenue to widen Western. And they have decided as of today, Monday, May 18th, to close Western. So information on this is changing frequently. In fact, what I said this weekend seems to be inaccurate because what what I'm seeing now is that 197th Street down to Danforth Road is completely closed. There is not the possibility of northbound or southbound traffic. We're going to need to be aware of that change and to plan ahead. Your route to Mass might well be impacted, and I can't predict at what point lanes will or will not be open. But as of this moment right now, Monday, May 18th, from Northwest 197th Street down to Danforth, Western is entirely closed and impassable. So plan ahead, know that your route might be affected. We're told that this construction project will last uh, at least up to a year. 
There we go, folks. A lot to take in, a lot to plan for. We're joyful that we're reopened and able to resume public masses. But again, remember, we are not back to normal and we will not be for some time. We all need to be aware of charity, patience, and cooperation. And again, I ask you, because I know there's going to be a tendency to just kind of want the normal thing that we want and to assume it should be in place because we're back inside but we're not back to normal, we're far from it. And we've gotta really be aware of ourselves and check ourselves when we're perhaps not being charitable, when we're being short with an usher, when we're complaining, frustrating, or not wanting to cooperate with procedures. I ask you please to check those attitudes because that might be coming from a place that's assuming something that's not true, assuming that we're back to normal, and we're just not. We're gonna do the best we can. We're gonna learn a lot as we go. No doubt adjustments will be made as we go. Please be patient, know of my prayers. I'm delighted that we'll be able to have public masses again. I look forward to seeing those of you I can see as you arrive on the campus. God bless you all.